thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, friends and neighbors in the House. Two nights ago, uh, I heard from uh, Representative Hall a summary of the uh, standings bill. I was um, very, very impressed how refreshing it was to have a standing bill before us that was not uh, encumbered by partisan political issues. However, things change very quickly around here. And today, a very short time later, we're debating the issue of judicial selection. And I think it's a sad day for the state of Iowa. To call what we have before us any sort of a compromise is laughable. It is what it obviously is. The latest of many desperate attempts to corral 51 votes for a piece of very questionable legislation. It was a bad idea when it was first proposed. It was a bad idea in the many configurations of it that have been thrown together to convince concerned Republicans to get on board. And it is no better this morning. It is bad because it politicizes our courts. It may be a little less stark than earlier versions, but that doesn't make it right. The bottom line is the same. It injects politics where it has no place in our courts. And as the old saying goes, be careful what you pray for. It may sound like a good deal for the majority party this morning, but it could very well be a good deal for the Democratic Party a few years from now. Is that the kind of court we want? One that changes with the political winds? I certainly hope not. It's bad because the people of Iowa have not asked for this. In fact, all indications are that they have confidence in our present judicial system. Where this bill came from is anybody's guess. I certainly didn't hear about it on the campaign trail. I didn't hear about it in the governor's inspiring condition of the state speech on January 15th. And I don't hear Iowans clamoring it for today anywhere except perhaps in this building. It is also bad because of the way it was formulated. Our present judicial system is the result of a blue ribbon task force that put together a framework for a court system based on merit, integrity, and competence. It was then presented to the people of Iowa and strongly endorsed by them. Contrast that to the tawdry process we're seeing today. Instead of a blue ribbon task force bringing its recommendations before the legislature and the people of Iowa, we have a proposal developed in a back room somewhere. Since the original proposal didn't have the votes to get it out of committee, it was uh, revised to round up the necessary votes. Since the bill that came out of committee didn't have the votes to pass the House, at least three or four versions have been put together in an attempt to get the votes needed. Is this a responsible way to dramatically alter Iowa's method of judicial selection? Little or no input from the courts or the legal community? Little or no opportunity for the public to react? And yet another version to round up that 51st vote from exhausted legislators on the final day of the session with the debate limited by time. Let's acknowledge the bill for what it is, a blatantly partisan effort to remake the court in the majority party's image. It's bad because we have one of the finest judicial systems in the country. It's a slap in the face of our courts that are ranked among the best in the country. It's a slap in the face of the nominating committees around the state who spend countless hours selecting judges based on their work ethic, integrity, and competence, not on partisan considerations. It's a slap in the face of our judges who work tirelessly 
to mete out justice. And it is a slap in the face of our Chief Justice, an honorable and decent man who is being treated very, very shabbily in this legislation. To label this modernization is a farce. To the freshman class who are witnessing this spectacle today, and to any of the folks we represent who are here or who are observing this, you are seeing firsthand the dark side of democracy. The dark side of democracy where legislation is put together and pushed through for partisan purposes and not on its merit. It's a sad day for the legislature and particularly for any legislators who are contemplating voting for this with a heavy heart. And it's a sad day for the people of Iowa. For me, hope springs eternal. There was a time in this legislature when the die was not cast before the first words of debate were spoken. There were times when bills and amendments actually lost on the floor because people attentively listened to debate and hearts were changed. I would like to think that those days are not gone for good. The decision you are about to make is a very significant one and one that I hope you will give prayerful consideration to. Thank you.